I could just show you what the answer is, which is, sorry, the, the question, it helps if you know what the question is. I don't know, because I uh, the question is that, and the answer is 13, okay? But the question is why, okay? And it illustrates a problem-solving process that you really need to master in order to, because you'll get more of these, and you won't have me sitting in the example there with you, working examples through to help you understand. So, if you got this question, that's great, quietly move on. If you did not, then you can pay attention. Okay. Now this is a great question because they give you an astonishingly small amount of data to work with. Okay, which actually is really good for you. That limits the number of choices you've got. Um, if you so choose uh, and are able, if you go ahead and do extension two uh, at the end of this year and next year, you learn all of these different kinds of integration. Now, even if you don't know what integration is, the whole point is that there's a lot of different, for every different kind of function that there is, there's a different way to integrate it. And when you go into extension two, you learn like twice as many ways to integrate, and so you can integrate twice as many things. So you have all of these choices sort of in your head. You're like, which way do I approach this? Now, this question is almost the opposite. You almost have no choices as to which way you can go, which actually does you a favor. Right? You have this thing, and then you have a sum of cubes. right? So if you have a sum of cubes, what's your immediate first instinct? You should, you should write out the identity for the sum of cubes, right? Which hopefully, if you remember from last week, looks like this. Okay, right. Now you look at this and you think, okay, this is my expansion, but I know lots of the parts of this and how to like, actually evaluate them, right? I know what x cubed plus y cubed is. I also know what x plus y is. Seeing that it's just multiplied through, I don't even need to write it. I just end up with this. Okay, now this is good because it has in it, it contains within it what I'm after. But then it has this, um, it has this little spanner in the works there. So then the question becomes, well, how do I eliminate that? What do I do in order to get that out of the way and solve? Now again, like I said before, they're doing you an enormous favor by providing you with a very small amount of information. Okay, because if this is all you've got to go off, then you know that in order to solve this problem, what you need must be tucked in here somewhere. The question is where? Right? Now, being that there's an x, y, and that's the problem, do you think the x cubed plus y cubed is going to help you? It's not, is it? Because to go from an x cubed to a plus a y cubed to an x, y is extraordinarily difficult. You'd have to tie yourself in algebraic knots to get that out of that. Whereas, when you look at this line, actually it's quite easy to get an xy out of there. What should we do to it? <coughs> we should square it. Shouldn't we? So if I take that first line, right? It's called equation one. Right? I have already used it, but I need to use it again in a different form in order to overcome this xy. So I'm going to square both sides. Okay? So that's fine, but the reason why this is useful is because the xy is going to appear in the expansion. There it is. Okay. So this is great because now I can take advantage of this in this line, right? By the way, just as a side note, when you've got simultaneous equations flying around, be sensible in the name that you name in the way that you name them. Okay. So even though this is like a third equation I'm going to use, I'm not going to call it equation three. I'm going to call it equation one a. The reason why is so that I make sure I don't, you know sub an equation back into itself and then you get like zero equals zero and you're like, oh great, that's true. <laughs> what do I do with it, right? So now I know I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it down into here, right? So I'm going to substitute in equation 1a. What's going to happen down here? This 19 is going to become equal to, hmm, think about it, I've got my x squared and my y squared there, right? So what's the difference between these? It should become that negative xy, which is always there, plus what? What's going to happen? x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. So I'm taking these out, right? I'm substituting these so for these. Them. So that's actually going to be 1 minus 2xy. Do you see that? No. Let me put in another line just in case, right? Yeah. See that? Can you see that? Oh, yeah. So there's my x squared plus y squared right there. 
Now you might think, oh, I've gone backwards because I've gotten rid of what I wanted, right? But what I'm doing is I'm eliminating this out of the equation because this I can work with. Have a look at it. You get an 18 over there because the one goes across and you get a minus 3xy. Aha, now I've isolated it. So now I can take that back to this line. Let me just simplify a little more. Negative six, <coughs> yep. So now if I bring this back, 19 is equal to x squared minus negative 6 plus y squared. Yep. So x squared, y squared, if I take away the 6 from both sides, there's my answer. That was 12. 